came out today to do a little video to explain what what happened with my middle finger here. Uh, as you know, I've, I've got a Jeep and I like to go out in the woods and uh, I go alone a lot of the time. They, uh, when I go out alone, one of the things that I have is a winch, a recovery point off of the front of my Jeep. Because if you're going to go out alone, you need to have, you know, the bag like you saw, my recon bag. Plus I have a, a, a more substantial bag in the back of the Jeep that I may go over at some point. But having the winch on the front of the Jeep allows me to uh, recover myself if uh, things really go bad. Obviously it won't fix like a transmission or if something actually makes the Jeep go down. But there's been a couple cases where I've been quite a ways out and I had the winch to, a to be able to recover myself. And it's been very nice. The problem with that was uh, I was in the garage. Well, let me, let me move the camera and uh, let you guys see, uh, see what happened. All right, as you guys can see here, we've got the winch line. We've got the rollers here, and the winch is hooked to the recovery point on the front of the Jeep. And uh, was at home, was messing with a new wireless controller, and for whatever reason, because I was in the garage at home, I know how dangerous these things are. I preach it to uh, other people that I meet, people that I see uh, off-roading for the first time, people that when they go out and they have everything's brand new, you can kind of tell they haven't used it yet. You know, these things can get very, very dangerous. Well, what had happened was when I plugged in the wireless controller, I hit the button, it winched out, the cable came out a little bit, and as I was adjusting this cable, because uh, it, it sagged a bit, my finger hit the winch in, which caught my middle finger and my ring finger underneath this rail. Luckily, nothing happened to my ring finger, but when it caught my finger underneath the cable, between the roller and the cable, it crushed the tip of my middle finger. So I'm sitting here, I mean, this happened in nanoseconds. Finger gets crushed, the, the winch went in, so my finger stuck there, and because it was getting crushed, I Ow, and I pulled my hand out and my fingertip, the meat of my fingertip stayed between the winch line and the roller and my bone came out with my finger. So essentially I degloved my middle finger and uh, went to the ER. Uh, there was still a bit of finger left in the bumper plus there was blood everywhere. They weren't going to be able to fix it. They were going to have to uh, amputate. And sure enough, I saw a hand surgeon a couple days later, and uh, they had to amputate. It's, it's healing decent. I've got another appointment in a couple days to uh, do a checkup on it, maybe remove the stitches, but uh, lots of pain meds and stuff like that right now. But, but yes, it uh, winched out, adjusted the cable, winched in right as the cable, or right as my finger was underneath on, on accident. Obviously, it was not on purpose. I was at home. Just it, it, It's like those guys that dry fire, they dry fire their gun for half an hour and then they throw a mag in it and for whatever reason they pull the trigger and they, they put a hole through their through their house into their neighbor's house. You know who you're you know who you are. <laughs> or the guys that go out there and holster their gun and they're not paying attention because they've done it a million times and they freaking catch their shirt on the trigger and they shoot themselves in the ass. You can't turn your 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 When you're dealing with this stuff, you have to be aware of what you're working on and you have to be mindful of that. These things are super dangerous. And uh, yeah, so that's what happened. So yeah, that's the details of what happened to my fingertip. Obviously it's, it's gone. It doesn't seem to affect my shooting, uh, which I really enjoy doing. Um, some of you are on the channel because of a video I did with uh, Casey, Coyote Works. Um, I really enjoy doing that kind of stuff, getting out, overlanding, adventuring, adventure travel. But based off of where I live and the schedule that I have, I can't get over to Central Oregon that often. And it seems like over here on the uh, the wetter side of, of Oregon, there's just more and more gates, more and more fences, more and more private property. And I respect that stuff. Where I'm at right now is at a 160 acre piece of land that I'm allowed to be on. Uh, it's part of my wife's family's um, homestead land from the 1930s and, and before that. And I'm very blessed to be here, but it's behind two gates. And uh, like I said, it's all private property. So 
I come out here to, to do bushcraft stuff with our bushcraft camp, which is right up here. I did that with my wife and daughters. Uh, you'll see some of that over on uh, my Off-Grid Recon channel. Uh, you also will see some of that stuff on this channel coming up. But uh, basically what this channel is going to be is a lot of shooting. Um, you saw the This versus That series. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. There's a playlist um, in my, uh, on my main page. Uh, go check that out. My daughter uh, really enjoys shooting stuff or seeing stuff get shot that explodes, whether it's cans of corn or, or uh, tomato sauce or water bottles. Shaving cream is a really fun one. But we did that together and that was a really good bonding experience and we plan on continuing those, uh, those videos. But we, uh, we really enjoy shooting and I want to make this channel more of a shooting channel than a overlanding channel. We do have trips planned that we're going to be doing so you'll see that on the channel from time to time. But mainly this is going to be gun reviews, ammo reviews, materials, different materials that we shoot at, uh, shooting long range stuff. We're going to start doing a little bit more of the uh, 500 yard and in kind of stuff. Shooting uh, 12 ounce soda cans with the 22 at 500 yards. I got that, that in the works. Uh, more ammo testing with the 20 gauge um, shock wave with the, the, the shorter barrel. I want to put that on paper at different distances to see what the pattern's doing versus just shooting a steel plate. We got a lot of plans for the channel, but uh, hopefully you guys will subscribe. Hopefully you guys will stick around. Um, if if uh, if you guys have any ideas or or if you see something done on another channel and you want to see it done uh, here, let me know. I'm I'm definitely open to you know a lot of ideas. Uh, I do want to give a couple shout outs. First shout out is to CK Knife and Tool. Chad, we're thinking about you, buddy. He's going through some some medical stuff right now. He just relocated his family from Washington over to Wyoming. Just super, super nice guy. Uh, he made this knife for me. That's what he does. He makes custom knives. He's moving his shop, so he's not set up yet. Uh, he's not taking orders yet, but uh, he's going to hit the ground running, and you're going to want to get on this because this guy is the next up and coming knife maker. I mean, he really has got his stuff down and he works with, uh, Coyote works a lot. And this knife is just amazing. He made the sheath, the fire steel, the knife. It's got this campfire pen on it, which is just fantastic. Hopefully that'll focus. White handle, orange liners, orange and black liners. But yeah, he's got a med some medical issues. You can go over to his channel and check it out if you want. Um, a lot of you guys are that are, if you're subscribed to me, you're probably subscribed to Chad. But we're thinking about him and uh, the move that he did. He's got some uh, tumors in his neck that he's uh, going in to get surgery on to find out if they're cancer or not. So we're just thinking about him, supporting, the, wearing the shirt today, and uh, just wishing him well. Uh, the next one we have is... 2a overland i'll put their their links in the description down below they sent me this really cool patch 2a overland they've got a jeep cherokee a lot like mine they're down in arizona and uh, they also sent a handwritten letter and a picture of their dog bean which i just absolutely love they got a pug that just goes everywhere with them Super cool of them to send the patch and the, the picture and the, and the handwritten note. Uh, really appreciate that kind of stuff. And if you guys can go over and check out their channel as well, they're starting up. They're doing more of the overlanding stuff, but uh, I did see them shoot on one of their last videos, which is kind of cool. So. We got a new CZ457. And we've got the uh, Maryland, Maryland Monroe. This is my uh, 22 uh, Ruger 1022. Outfitted with all kid stuff, kid bolt, kid trigger, kid barrel, um, vortex optic. Uh, this is a very, very accurate gun for a semi-auto. But uh, we just recently picked up the 457. This is the Varmint Precision Trainer MTR. It has the match uh, chamber. And one of the things I liked about this is it slows down the ammo usage because it's bolt action, uh, five shot magazine, and uh, it seems more robust than the 1022. The 1022, to get it out to distance, I like to shoot two, 300 yards with these things. To get that 1022 to work well, I had to find the biggest MOA rail I could find, which was a 30 MOA rail, 
and I had to shim it, but it still it still doesn't have the consistency or the the strength that the 457 has with the Area 419 50 MOA rail and then the Leupold Mark IV on top. With the Leupold Mark IV, um, mathematically, I can dial this to 500 yards uh, dial and then start holding over. With the uh, 1022 20 inch barrel, I can dial to about 300 yards before I have to start holding over. So this one is a little bit more rigid. It's a little bit more uh, packable, I guess you could say. This would be one that I would carry around to do some varmint hunting, uh, Central Oregon, uh, Prairie Dogs, things like that. You can see it's got the uh, suppressor on the front. But I wanted to test this gun out to see what these uh, CZ 457s, 455s, this one's very similar to the 455. It's got the Yo Dave trigger kit, trigger spring. Uh, it's breaking right now at one pound. Um, Leopold Mark IV, like I said, it's the four to f uh, four and a half to 14. I wish it had more zoom than the 14, but uh, that's what I had at home. And uh, so I slapped it on here and it gives me 101 MOA dial up. With the uh, Lapua Center X, it can get me out to theoretically 500 yards. We haven't shot that far with it yet. I've only shot out to, I think it was 280. Um, but uh, we're gonna do some testing today. You'll see that on another video where we're gonna put the scope camera through these and uh, do some grouping at 50 yards, 100 yards, 25 yards. But uh, if you guys like that kind of stuff, you wanna see what it groups. Uh, I don't shoot a lot of groups because it's, it's just shooting paper. I like to make sure that the guns are mechanically accurate, meaning shooting groups. That shows the mechanical accuracy of the gun, different ammos. But I'm not going to feed hundreds of rounds through it to find the one one ammo that shoots just a, a little bit better than the others. So with this gun already, the, the new CZ, I've put probably 400 rounds through it, different varieties. And the thing that I've learned about this gun is because of the quality of the gun, it shoots everything really, really well. Same with the uh, kid, the, the little Ruger 1022 here. When you go up in quality on the barrel, the trigger, the bolt, that kind of stuff, your ammo usage, you can shoot really tight groups with some of that high dollar ammo, but when you shoot things like CCI standard, it's light years better than when the gun was stocked. So you can actually get by with cheaper ammo if you can afford to get the barrel, the trigger, that kind of stuff, put a good scope on it, make sure that everything's level and tight. But that's one of the things I've enjoyed and I'm going to be doing some long distance shooting. So um, we're gonna be having that probably here in the next month or two. You guys stay tuned, like having you along. If you don't get a chance or if you hadn't had a chance, go check out the uh, the playlist for the, uh, the this versus that with my daughter. I'll link it right up here. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. Have a good day.